Angel, no barking. Remember what we talked about. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Ned over My Philippine Dreams. It is a beautiful day here in Dumaguete City. This is my favorite time to be in the Philippines. Usually during the burrs, September, October, November, December, January, because it's cooled off and the weather is just absolutely perfect. A few weeks ago, or a week ago, I believe, I said that I was going to do an important video, and um, this is that important video. And the subject of this video was precipitated by two unfortunate events that occurred recently. The first was the untimely passing of a friend of ours. He was a 75-year-old, 74-year-old Canadian, and he had a sudden heart attack, and it was a complete coronary event, and it happened really quick. And he was, uh, he lasted, he got, they got him to the hospital and he passed away shortly thereafter at the hospital. And the other event was something that happened the other night and that was being about 10 or 15 meters away from a pretty stupendous motor crash. It was a scooter, uh, Honda Bead, it was actually a traffic officer that was riding it and it looked like a horse cart came out a little bit. He hit the left rear end of that and uh, that caused the accident. So basically what this video has to do with is having emergency contact information, having next of kin information, uh, emergency medical information, allergies and all that available to you so that in case anything happens quickly and suddenly, because again, you know, when you're out and about, things can go south very quickly. You can get sick, you can have a heart attack, you can have a coronary, a stroke, motorcycle crashes, these things happen all the time here. And the subject of this video first came up when people were talking about how difficult it was to find his next of kin, to find, you know, the address or information, phone numbers, any contact information. Ultimately, they were able to identify, I believe it was one of his kids, and they were able to, you know, get the information for the services and the cremation and all that. So it ended up well, but again, it was a bit of an ordeal, it was a bit of a struggle to identify who should be notified of his passing away. So we all basically know that we have a limited amount of time upon this mortal coil. We all know we're going to die, but we're not sure when and where that's going to happen. And as foreigners living outside of our home nations, thousands of miles, sometimes tens of thousands of miles away from our homes, a lot of times we're out and about by ourselves. We're coming over to the Philippines, we're going to Thailand, we're going to Cambodia, we're going to Peru, whatever, by ourselves. And unless you have, you know, some sort of way to provide contact information for an ex-of-kin or in case of an emergency. If something happens to you, the local indigenous population is not going to know what to do with you. Hence the necessity of making sure that you are known. And to that end, I basically see two sort of solutions. And, and in the comments section, if you have any suggestions or any experiences that you've had with this type of situation, please leave it down in the comments section. The first scenario, the first situation, is letting another expatriate or letting somebody else know who you are, providing them with the contact information in case of an emergency, uh, any relevant medical conditions, any allergies, anything along those lines, providing email addresses, phone numbers, your real name, all that information. Now that requires trusting somebody and some people don't want to trust so that can be a problem but that is a good way to do it and you can actually reciprocate and find out that person's emergency contact information so if something happens to them you can help them out no angel the other situation the other scenario involves carrying some sort of identification card or medical alert type bracelet thing on yourself to provide that information to whoever is responding to the issue at hand. Now, some people carry that identifying information, emergency, you know, contact card in their wallets. The only problem with that is if you go down and somebody decides to lift your wallet, all that emergency contact information is going to be gone. So what some people do, and this is actually a friend of mine that has done this, he was in the military and he's retired from the military. He actually has dog tags that he wears whenever he goes out. When he, when he goes home, he takes the dog tag off. When he comes back, he takes it off. And it's only the one dog tag, it's not the other toe tag that's usually included on it, so it's just the one plaque. And what he did was he got a little magic marker or something, and he wrote down all the emergency contact information, all that relevant information concerning him in case something, when he's out and about, if something happens, somebody, his family or friends or whatever will be able to be notified. And as everybody knows, there's also medical ID bracelets and necklaces you can get, uh, which is important for people with allergies or medical conditions. And you can also get those and have engraved into it the emergency contact information that we were talking about before. Now, what I do, my solution to the situation is I have a wallet. Actually, let me get my wallet. 
because everybody loves my wallet. All right, here it is, my wallet. I call this my Philippines wallet. People usually get a chuckle when I pull this out, but I don't like carrying around a big ass wallet with all my credit cards and all that stuff in it. I like to pare things down to their most simple state, such as my brain. So what I do is basically, this is just a Ziploc bag. This is, it's my Philippines wallet, and it rains a lot in the Philippines, so it's, it's waterproof. So this actually makes sense to have. Inside my Philippines wallet, I usually have a couple thousand pesos. I have my Philippines driver's license, and I have my ACR card. I also have my BPI banking card. So basically, this is life pared down to its simplest, most form. And there's also two cards inside of here. And also in my Philippine wallet, is a card identifying who I am, my full name, emergency contact information, the email and phone number of my family in the United States, a contact number of somebody local here that I've known for quite some time and that I trust. And I also have a copy of that same card that I usually keep in my right front pocket. My Philippines wallet, I always wear cargo shorts, so this is usually stuffed down on the left side or the right side of my cargo shorts. I got the two buttons and the zipper thing securing it at all times haven't had an issue thus far. So in case somebody decides to lift my Philippine wallet and run off with it, there's still another card in my front white pocket identifying who I am and the emergency contact information, any medical situations, any allergies, anything like that. Alright, so I know this isn't a super happy topic to talk about, but I think it's really important. I'm actually going to add this to the book because when I was putting together, you know, the prep list and everything, belly my unboxes, what to bring and what to do, I didn't include this. And this is, I think this is really important because if you get caught with your pants down and you get caught in a bad situation, whether it's sickness, whether it's an allergy situation or an untimely death, you know, this is important to have the information because if we pass away, if we die in a foreign land, we're not going to care because we're not going to be here anymore. But the families themselves are the ones who are going to be suffering and wondering what's going on. So this is important. Again, if you have any suggestions or experiences of your own, please leave them down in the comment section. Be sure to like, dislike, subscribe, do all that stuff. This is Net Over My Philippine Dreams, and I will see you next time. Hopefully. Peace.